If the wall is breached, Helm's Deep will fall. Even if it is breached, it would take a number beyond reckoning. Thousands to storm the keep. Tens of thousands. But, my lord, there is no such force. <laughs> So that was Lord of the Rings. <laughs> and, uh, you know, sometimes these videos just hit me. And uh, I was watching, before I went on the hike today with the Boo Dog, um, I was watching uh, a video. Man, I couldn't find the exact numbers. And I've been, been fishing around everywhere, surfing the Internet. Uh, I tell you, I... It's, it's hard to get you information. I'm going to tell you that right now. And, and then once I have the information, sometimes it just disappears off of YouTube. Imagine that. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, by the way, there was a lot of people uh, today talking on YouTube. I mean, the censoring is getting... I mean, they're destroying their business model. It doesn't make sense to me. So, I mean, Rumble, uh, they came out with a major upgrade. So, you might want to start going there if you enjoy YouTube. I... I used to enjoy YouTube, and I'm still there, of course, because it's still a great platform, but their censorship is going to ruin it for you. But anyway, the theme of today's uh, uh, talk, because it hit me today, because um, the video that I saw earlier today, I'm going to just tell you, was, uh, and I want, I want to say it was either uh, Scott Ritter or Douglas McGregor or somebody else, and they were talking about how the most that the uh, British could put together would be two battalions to go up against the Russians. And in fact, they said uh, it was either their entire military or their entire army would fit in a soccer stadium. <laughs> and 30% of the stock, uh, soccer stadium would be empty. That's all that the British can field as far as military forces go. And they said the Germans are even bigger joke. And then they were talking about France. France is toothless. So it, basically all of these European countries are toothless tigers compared to the, 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 the monumental conflict that's taking place in Ukraine. And so I got to thinking today and I was going like, okay, so, it, well, uh, the only nation right now that I think that has some teeth to it is Poland. Um, and who knows, and, and maybe Romania to a certain degree, but uh, it just seems to me that uh, it, all of Europe is, is, is a toothless tiger that it has nothing to go up against. And even, even us, I mean, we've only got uh, 50,000 combat troops in uh, Europe right now. Uh, we might be able to drum up, um, well, we've got, if you want to take the, uh, the, the guys that sit behind the desk and uh, punch on keyboards and put rifles in their hands, you could get 100,000. So anyway, that's, but I got to thinking about this scene in the movie that this army uh, that uh, Salaman put together and it was, it was the army to destroy the world of men. And I thought about that line. So this, this army that we built in Ukraine was an army designed by NATO to destroy the world of the Russian Federation. How else can you explain it? When you've only got two battalions of British that can go up against uh, Russia, and yet, and I'm not going to get into some numbers here. I mean, the numbers that, that Ukraine, the number of battalions, the equipment they had, we've been equipping them for eight years. Now, so I want to I want to paint this picture to you, okay? Because this is this is where a lot of people they say, well, you're just a Putin lover. You're uh, you're all for the. I'm not for war in any way, shape, or fashion. But when you when you do something like this to provoke a nation, 
I, I, to me, Russia had no choice. Because think about it. Suppose that Russia, of course, they're the evil Putin right now, had equipped Mexico with 500,000 troops with every weapon known to mankind, uh, battalions upon battalions. Each battalion is 4,000 uh, equipped with uh, artillery. Thousand, I mean, here's another number for you, okay? Uh, according to what I saw today, Britain would be out of shells within a week at the, nu at the rate at which munitions have been fighting this war in Ukraine. Well, think about it. This has been going on for a year. So that's how many stockpiled munitions that NATO had put in Ukraine. I guess they just thought Ukraine was, was their last hope, uh, were the globalists, uh, the, the, the lunatics in, in Washington, D.C. I guess they thought this was their last best hope. And you think about it. I mean, the world is made of suckers. And I hate to say that because I served in the military and I certainly consider myself somewhat in that category. I thought I was serving my nation and I did to a certain degree. But think about it. All these, these uh, men and women dying in Ukraine, for what? For NATO. They're not dying for their country. I mean, they think they are, I guess. Maybe they, they've been uh, brainwashed into that. I think a lot of them are being conscripted by the uh, Nazis in uh, Ukraine. And don't tell me there aren't Nazis there. Um, and I'm going to give you another uh, factoid that I got today. But let's just get into the, the daily uh, report here. So Russia claims they have found uh, 30 U.S. biological um, war laboratories, or if you want to call them... Um, biological experimental laboratories in Ukraine thus far and they said at least three dozen more remain uh, in, in their um, estimation. So the other thing that, that was pointed out today and I, and I totally agree with this was you, you know that when we provided those HIMARS systems to be able to strike remotely at Russia they came online very quickly. Well no way that happens unless there are uh, contractors on the ground um, and so what is a contractor? I, I want to explain this to you because it actually was kind of funny because I was watching another video today and it was an Australian, um, or Austrian, excuse me, an Austrian officer and he came out and he says, uh, he says, yeah, he says, there's no problem about the tanks and the weapons that we're providing to Ukraine. He says, because all I have to do is take off my uniform, declare myself a contractor. I'm no longer part of NATO and I can go fight on behalf of Ukraine. Well, that's what a lot of uh, people, and of course, they get paid extremely well. You don't, you don't become a mercenary. And, and by the way, these are temporary mercenaries. They'll come back and get their commission back and just integrate right back into these militaries, uh, assuming they survive. Well, you know, of course, Russia took out a number of these HIMARS systems, and that's why you're seeing body bags coming back to the NATO countries uh, from all of these guys. And so that's what I, I'm talking about is fools. Right. So we've got all these people that are dying in Ukraine for for, for NATO. For their their country's going to be destroyed. It, it, you know, I don't don't understand it. And then you got all these NATO uh, uh, military uh, or ex military or, or uh, contractors. Let's just say they're going over to die in this war. And it's all about the politicians. And the politicians are sitting back drinking pina coladas and making a ton of money. Oh my God, I can't believe all these people are willing to die for these idiots, but that's just my opinion. So, um, but anyway, so a lot of these HIMAR systems were taken out and those were manned, in my opinion, by contractors or let's say ex-NATO uh, military or even uh, retired or not retired uh, veterans that uh, just, well, I mean, it's hard times, right? If you're going to get big money to go over there and man a HIMAR system, that's a very special skill. You know, you want you might want to roll the dice, and uh, hopefully you might make it back home and, and help your family. Uh, well, I'm sure you heard about this. Um, Oleskiny uh, Rezinakov, uh, he, he was um, displaced uh, today, another shakeup in the Ukrainian high command. Uh, uh, he was the defense minister. Um, he was replaced by the spy chief, uh, KYR YLO Krylo. Budanov, Budanov, there you go, Budanov. I'm trying to work on my pronunciation. Somebody criticized me for that. And he was the head of the intelligence agency, and uh, so it's kind of funny that he's taken over. That. But, I mean, it's not like uh, Rezennikov has disappeared. He's just going over to uh, to, to work in uh, 
in strategic industries, and I think he might be the head of that now. So I mean, uh, and it was about a food uh, corruption, which is stupid. You know, you know that they just wanted him out. Um, yeah, I'm sure you heard about the earthquake in uh, Turkey. Um, last number I heard was 284 people dead. Uh, um, it was a 7.4 7 magnitude earthquake. Uh, good Lord, uh, 2,323 uh, were injured and over uh, 1,700 1, houses collapsed. Um, that's, that's horrible. Uh, and of course, it went through, uh, I think, Cyprus, and I uh, can't remember the other country, uh, but I don't think, they, they didn't suffer anywhere near the, the damage that, um, that Turkey did. But this is one thing that I've, this, you will not hear about this in the Western news, Putin promised aid to Turkey, and they've actually flown in supplies to Turkey from Russia to help them out. So I thought that was very nice of uh, the, the Russians to, to send in uh uh, aid to Turkey in the middle of a war, no less. Um, so, uh, this was another interesting factoid: was uh, Portugal sending two tanks uh, that are in disrepair? I guess it's a, it's all symbolism at this point, right? They wanted uh, Russian tanks on Ukrainian soil to piss off the Russians, and now they wanted Portugal to commit to two tanks. I imagine the arm twisting that's going on from the United States on the European nations. It's just all going to backfire. You know that. They're going to be pissed at the United States for quite some time for this this fiasco that we're engaged in. The war needs to come to an end. Um, this was uh, something I found amazing today. <laughs> Are you familiar with Alex Jones? I got a friend of mine. He's my, well, he's my best friend at this point that's still alive. I, I have some good friends that are dead now. But anyway, he hates Alex Jones. He can't stand him. But I'm thinking I want to make a video about all the conspiracies that Alex Jones has talked about on his show that have become uh, truth. So if you're interested in a video like that, it would take me a while to do the research for that video. But uh, the, the latest one was, you know, he was talking uh, in videos back when I was watching him I, on InfoWars, and I still watch him occasionally. I, I just love the guy. I think he's entertaining as hell. But anyway, he... Um, he was talking about balloons out of China that they could load um, uh, EMP uh, bombs on and destroy the uh, U.S. electrical grid. And everybody thought, oh, no, no, Alex, we can't have that. Well, you know, the balloon that just came over the United States. <laughs> what another conspiracy theory that Alex Jones seems to be uh, correct on. I just loved it. I was like, holy shit. I remember when he was talking about that, and I thought, well, that's kind of... It sounds far-fetched, but I always keep an open mind about these things. I just thought, well, you know, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe not. Uh, and so we saw it. Uh, by the way, that, that fiasco, I'm going to tell you, we have a military that is just, the, the upper ranks of our military are just screwed up, man. They could have blown this, this, this I mean, suppose it had done some serious damage. Suppose, you know, suppose, you know, bombs to drop or a nuclear bomb or, you know, I mean, I, I'm sure that, you know, when you think about the assessment, I mean, if the Chinese were going to want to do serious damage, I mean, they've got satellites that can do the same thing I'm sure this balloon can do. But, you know, I, I think it was a test of the U.S. defenses and we uh, did not rise to the occasion. And, and, and as somebody pointed out today, we sent up a, an F-22, you know, gazillion dollar airplane with a million dollar missile to shoot down a Fifty-four thousand dollar balloon. <laughs> you know? so, so the Chinese won in the end, right? But I mean, I, I I do I do see the point. I mean, but if I was the Pentagon, I'd be thinking about, well, we need a cheap way to take these things down. You know, maybe send up an F twenty-two or or something that uh, and just hit it with a gun. You know, and 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 you know, use a hundred dollars worth of uh, rounds to to shoot the balloon out of the air rather than a million dollar missile. But that's just my opinion. Um, as Scott Ritter pointed out today, he said that uh, Russia is now the best uh, military in the world at mobilization. And the reason I got into that was uh, there are reports now that uh, Ukraine is grabbing 16-year-olds off the street and sending them to the front lines, much like uh, Nazi Germany did during World War II. Don't know if that's true. I have no evidence of that. I'm just hearing uh, rumors from uh, like Telegram and other sources that say that that's what they're doing. Um, and I talked about the Austrian officer saying he could resign and just be a contractor and go to Ukraine and, and operate. Because, you know, 
do you think it's going to be Ukrainians operating these tanks? If they ever get there, I, I think that's just symbolic. They, they just want to, you know, piss Russia off and, uh, and say, yeah, we're going to send tanks. But the war will be over by the time any tanks get there can do any good. Um, yeah, and, and you know what, Scott Ritter pointed this out, and, and I can, you know, I can kind of see it. I knew that Russia had one hell of an integrated air defense system. But uh, he made the bold statement that it's the best in the world, and it does make sense. I mean, when you think about it, you know, what are our air defenses in the United States? Well, we have vast amounts of coast to defend, you know, uh, uh, you know cities all along the East Coast. I'd say, and he, he says that our, our air defenses are a joke. Um, you know, even though we can, we can put the Iron Dome around Israel, he says, but you know, that's one city. I mean, we can't, we can't, we, yeah, we could probably defend Washington, D.C. I'm sure it's got very good air defenses, but uh, do you think Jacksonville, Florida's got air defenses? I mean, where are they at? You point them out to me, you know? So, so anyway, uh, but Moscow, and he was pointing out because of NATO's encroachment on uh, Moscow, he says they've had to work on these air defenses for quite some time because, you know, within a couple you know, a couple of minutes, I mean, you know, you could have NATO fighters dropping bombs on Moscow. So they've got very, very good. Um, and I, I believe that. And, and and they've also sold these air defenses to other countries. So they're, they've been proven in combat. So because um, they're so close to NATO. Um, and, and so this was getting back to the theme of the video. I wanted to talk about this. So, you know, Bakhmut, I'm sure you've heard. I mean, it's a terrible tire mode, but Bakhmut, they say, and it's been a meat grinder since May. And so I, Scott Ritter said that Ukraine has thrown 14 to 20 brigades or battalions. I think that's battalions. Okay. Tw well, I think he said brigades. I was writing down the notes from his video, but anyway, let's just say four to 5,000 per brigade, brigade uh, 20, 20 of those times um, 5,000. Um, what is that? A hundred thousand? I don't know. I mean, I, I can't crunch the numbers in my head. My brain don't work that well anymore. But I mean, that's a hell of a lot of uh, troops that Ukraine has been able to throw into this just one battle. Think about how vast the Ukraine army was. It's, it, I dare say Ukraine could have invaded Europe and just taken everything, taken Russia, I mean, taken uh, Germany, taken, I mean, if they had decided to go south and think, you know what, screw the West, we're not going to be your proxy war. Rather than attack Russia, let's team up with Russia and just take all of all of Europe. That would have been poetic justice, wouldn't it? Uh, anyway, but anyway, let's just keep going. Uh, now, Scott Ritter, I don't know where he's pulling these numbers from. He says that Ukraine has lost 300,000 and will lose another 300,000 towards the end of the war. Uh, now, um, Colonel Doug McGregor has said that, that it's 154,000, probably many more than that, but that's all that he can confirm at this point. Um, and he did point out, and I told you about this, that's why I said they're recruiting 16-year-olds right now. He says Ukraine has gone through 12 rounds of mobilization. Well, as far as I know, I think Russia has gone through two rounds of mobilization. They had, well, they, they sent in the initial force, which I don't think was a mobilization. I think that was just uh, regular Russian troops that went in, uh, I, what was it, about 80,000 or so uh, when they were doing what they called the police action, hoping for a peace treaty, which almost took place in March. And then uh, when when Ukraine came at them with with everything they had, uh, you know, I don't think Russia knew how well uh, Ukraine had. Been. Well, maybe they did. I mean, I I can't imagine their intelligence not knowing how well armed Ukraine was. And so then they they did a fir the first round of mobilization, and, and uh, of course now they're they're up to at least five hundred thousand troops massed on the uh, borders. By the way, I did get some information on Belarus, and I was wondering because Belarus says they're not going to enter the war. Unless, unless Poland or Finland or Romania enter the war. And then Belarus, uh, with the, and that's why I was wondering why Russia has uh, like over 100,000 troops in Belarus. Well, what's their purpose? Um, now, I, 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 I'm sure Belarus won't stop the Russians from storming out of Belarus to invade Ukraine. But I... My understanding is they're actually there to protect Belarus. Uh, so unless uh, Poland or Romania uh, or Finland or, you know, uh, any of those nations or, and Finland, I haven't heard any rumors that they, they, they're thinking about it in the war. I, I can't imagine, you know, who knows? Uh, this thing could escalate beyond anything we could ever imagine. But, but Poland's beating the war drums and so is Romania. 
And if they come across, the Russians are going to come across, and, and Belarus, uh, they're going to come across the border. I mean, you talk about world war, so now they're going to, they're going to attack Poland from the north. So that, that, that could get uh, bad, let's just say. Um, right now, uh, according to Colonel McGregor, there's only 18 to 22 million people left in Ukraine. Now think about that. That's the size of the Netherlands. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, Ukraine is a vast country. I mean, think about Canada, right? I mean, Canada has all these vast stretches of, of their nation that's kind of empty, you know. So Ukraine, um, it was 37.5 million, which tells you it was pretty small, a populated country. Now it's, it's down to 18 to 22 million. Um, so because people have left, uh, a lot of people have died. Um, and then the last uh, statistics I wanted to leave you with was uh, Colonel McGregor says that right now, the Russians can fire uh, or are firing uh, 60,000 artillery rounds a day at the Ukrainians. And the Ukrainians are only able to muster up uh, 6,500 a day. Um, let's finish uh, you with a little clip. Boy, I tell you, it's good to have two phones now. I can, I can get comments and everything else. And uh, I, I can't tell you who this is. I would never want to... Um, because my channel's controversial, and I'll probably be in jail someday. But um, I did want to read you a, a, a beautiful uh, comment that uh, this woman made. And uh, you know what? I, I you know I was telling you, you know, if the FBI knocks on your door, get a lawyer. She went. I, I imagine it. It sounds to me like this person has had some. Uh, interaction with the CIA or the uh, FBI. And so I'm just going to read you uh, word for word the comment. I thought this was brilliant. And I, I think that this is something that you're going to need to think about. So it says, if the FBI or CIA knocks on your door, you don't say you want a lawyer and not talk to them. That's why I never keep my door unlocked. And when someone knocks on my door, I don't open it and unlock first. I peep out the blind, uh, blind hole and see if it's someone I don't recognize. I holler, who is it? And if it's, if it's the FBI or the CIA, I tell them through the door, I'm calling 911, which makes sense. I mean, these could be phony badges, right, on the other side of the door. I thought this was a brilliant comment. I thought about it. I was like, man, this person is so right. So this way you're gonna get the local police, especially here in Florida. You know, our sheriffs, uh, we don't obey federal law here in, uh, in Florida unless it makes sense. There are federal laws that make sense, uh, but most, you know, when, when, when they want us to enforce vaccine mandates, for example, or, or do stuff like that, we don't obey. Well, those are executive orders anyway, not really federal law. But anyway, so I'm calling 911 that the law, I have the right to have a local police officer witness any talks with the FBI or CIA. Know your laws. Do not let them in your house. I do, you know, because... I don't trust either one of them. They can shoot you. They can plant false evidence against you. They can plant drugs. Say you were a drug kingpin dealer. Blah, blah, blah. They can get away with murder all the time. They always call the police and just tell them federal agents at your house and you need an officer. Well, yeah, and so you just tell them you need an officer as a witness. That is the law and it does make sense. I mean, I bet in here in Florida, if I call 911, they're gonna come out whether the FBI or C, probably, they, if, if I was a, a local, and I, I haven't talked to any local police officers, but I'd be like, oh, hell yeah. If the FBI is there, we're going. You know, we're going, baby. We don't trust them screw, those, those screw jobs out of the federal government. So let them in, don't let them in unless the officers arrive first and then tell them through the door, keep it locked. Call 911 within seconds and then wait on them before saying anything to the feds. So there you go. That's a brilliant comment. And I thank this person. Uh, I won't name you. Um, I, that is some great, great, great advice. And I always try on my videos to give you a little piece of advice beyond what's going on in the world. Okay, so that's it. Peace out. Stay free. And it's good, 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 good to live in the free, free, free Republican state of Florida where we have no mandates. Nothing going on, and it's great to live under the great leadership of Governor DeSanctimonious. And by the way, uh, if you want to watch uh, his latest videos, he's doing some other great things for the state. And I was watching videos on that today, and uh, he was talking about how we uh, 
We have some of the safest cities in the United States. Uh, we pay our, mil our, um, our, our law enforcement extremely well. He gave them bonuses this year. Uh, we've also had a, a law enforcement enlistment program where if you want to uh, leave uh, New York City uh, as an experienced police officer and come to Florida and be a police officer here. I think it's like a three thousand dollar bonus. That was the last figure that I that I heard. Uh, I'm sure there's probably programs to get you into housing, uh, especially if you're good at your job. And uh, and he also pointed out we don't do the uh, uh, you know where you know the what is it called the bail thing where they can just get out with minimal bell or no bell the no bell i think it's called the no bell anyway this is a boo boo see i he's tired man i <laughs> i warm i warm out at the park oh man cute little guy i tell you what he follows me around it's i gotta give him a shower tonight all right so that's it oh my god hope you enjoyed the video but that, that slant on to end the world of men it was to end the world of the Russian Federation. And think about how big we made the Ukraine military.